Eugenia Zuckerman is here. Good morning, Eugenia. Good morning, Charles. And I must say, I've loved all my Sunday mornings with you, as we all have. Oh, it's been, it's, it has been lovely being here with you. You know, um, the great Helen Hayes once told me in her old age that even she was finding it hard to find appropriate uh, acting roles. Can you imagine? Yet Claire Bloom seems to go on and on and on. She does. She's an enormously versatile actress who does theater, movies, television, one-woman performances. She does narration with major symphony orchestras, as she will next week with the New York Philharmonic. And she was just in San Francisco, L.A., Chicago this weekend <laughs> doing Russian poetry. So she does tremendous amounts of work. She is such a radiant and mesmerizing actress who's intelligence and sensitivity shines through everything she does. I can't sit still, I can't. <laughs> this, this is a rehearsal of Chekhov's The Cherry Orchard in Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> Love me if you will. I know I'm being silly. <laughs> its star, Claire Bloom, oh is one of the few actresses who has sustained a major career since her youth. <laughs> Claire Bloom became a professional actress when she was just 15. Anastasia's is dead, and uh, <laughs> cross-eyed Petrushka has left us and works in town now. Well, your Petrushka first major role stopped. was Ophelia. And that was when I was 17. Yes. And was that uh, an enormously thrilling? Was it challenging and terrifying? Oh, nothing was terrifying to me then. Really? You know, it it's, may have become so. <laughs> and I realized what I was doing, but everything to me was just part of what I expected, this great actress life that I, I'd invented for myself. Claire Bloom was born in London. As a young girl during the Blitz in World War II, she was evacuated to America. When she returned home, she single-mindedly devoted herself to becoming an actress on the London stage. She was so good, she came to the attention of the legendary Charlie Chaplin, who asked her to return to America to play opposite in his film, Limelight. She became an overnight star. That must have been uh, enormously thrilling that the great Charles Chaplin was interested in you. I think my agent asked me to send photographs to Chaplin of myself because he was interested in me for a movie and I just thought it was uh, absolutely in inconceivable that that could be so. And maybe I was frightened, uh, but I didn't send them. <laughs> and then I got a telegram saying, where are the photographs, Charles Chaplin? <laughs> so I sent them immediately. And making the choices that followed, the choices of, of work to do, you have been enormously idealistic. Yes, I have. I mean, I sometimes think that for every movie I turn down, I should be put against the wall and shot. <laughs> because my, my uh, financial life would be much more secure, etc., if I had done a lot of these things. On the other hand, uh, along with Edith Piaf, I regret nothing because I have done what I wanted to, to do. And what I... She acted with Paul Schofield. She acted with John Gielgud. And she acted with Richard Burton. Well, I believe that a number 11 bus will get me to Hammersmith. I do not believe it will be driven by uh, Father Christmas. When you worked with Burton uh, in A Spy Who Came Not In From The Cold, uh, well, what was that film like? Oh, well, I knew it was a marvelous book. And I'd read it, of course, uh, before it was ever offered to me, and I was thrilled that it was. Um, you know you know when you're working on first-class material. And it Laurence Olivier called on her to play Lady Anne in a production of Richard III that he was directing. She ended up on the cover of Life magazine. People ask how he directed me, but I don't remember that specifically. I remember much more that the direction was just doing the scene with him, you know. And, and that, was, that was the inspiration. That the left the lady of thy husband did it to help thee to a better husband. His better does not breathe upon the earth. Who he lives that loves you better than he could. Where is he? Here. Yeah. Out! Damn swat! Out, I say. You've had a lifelong love affair with Shakespeare. Yes, I, I guess most actors have. <laughs> Here's the smell of the blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Oh, 
I mean, there it is. You can't beat it, can you? <laughs> it's, it says everything about every state of human emotion, um, about women, about men, about love, about death, about you name it. There's nothing that he didn't know. Mary King, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. You are remarkably musical. I mean, there's a fiddler in your family in, in history, right? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Probably a fiddler in every Jewish family somewhere. <laughs> Her feeling for music has made Claire Bloom a leading choice for works that combine words and music. Go, but the huntsmen wake the lovers with their horns. She appeared at Caramore in A Midsummer Night's Dream with Andre Previn and the Orchestra of St. Luke's. Joy, gentle friends, joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. There's nothing like it in the world. It's you, this great machine behind you, this force, and it just catapults you into a different kind of uh, state of mind. It's, it's so incredibly exciting and moving. And you'll have to cut down the cherry orchard. <laughs> cut down the cherry orchard. <laughs> Anton Chekhov knew something about the human condition, too. His play, The Cherry Orchard, is one of Bloom's favorites. Once be generous. Show a little pity for me. And this Don't recent production in Cambridge at the prestigious here. American Repertory Theater was a favorite of the critics. And my grandfather, too. When you are playing a role like Luba, Am I pronouncing it right? Yes, I Luba. Have, Lu Luba. Luba. Means love, I believe. Luba. Yeah. Well, when you, when you, believe. you've played her before, yes. and yet, how do you then reapproach a, a play in order to keep it fresh? Um, I saw her then as a much more frivolous woman than I do now. Um, funnier, perhaps. <laughs> but uh, I realize now, um, perhaps it's ten years later, and I have been buffeted about a little too, that she's a woman who has been really uh, buffeted about by life. She's a woman who's been to the down into the depths and comes up again. You look radiant, my darling. Your eyes are sparkling like diamonds. Are you happy? Very happy. Very, very. What very would you say is the the best thing about being an actress? Well, the, the best is also the worst, and that's the uncertainty. But. I'm a gambler's daughter, and uh, I think the throw of the dice is always, even at my age and perhaps older, terrifically exciting. When I make curtsy, bid me farewell. CBS Evening News isn't just a place where the world comes together. It's a place where all of our worlds come together. Somalia, Bosnia. Health care, the economy. Stories such as the flood or the hurricane. And sometimes, even a moment that lets us all sit back and smile. This is CBS. Hi, this is Mike Hall, with dozens of good reasons for you to come to Mike Hall Chevrolet. The area's largest selection of brand new S10 Blazers. Mike Hall dares to compare Chevy's S10 Blazer to Ford's Explorer. The S10 has a larger, more powerful engine, greater towing capacity, gets better gas mileage, and costs up to $3,500 less. The S10 Blazer is more powerful, cheaper to drive, and cheaper to own. So I guess there really is no comparison. Come see for yourself at Mike Hall Chevrolet. America's number one S10 Blazer dealer, Mike Hall Chevrolet. Springtime on the fabulous Star of Texas. Fun? 